Lion of Judah, I go to the chamber, see Yeshua. Hamashia, Lion of Judah. Lion Yeshua, Hamashia.
Voice of God.
but you can never have. You are the God. You can never
any God like you. I never see any God like you. I never see any God like you. I never see. I never see any God like you. I never see. I never see any God like you. I never see. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. We are still in praying. The book of Luke 18 27 says, And he said, The things which are possible, impossible with men, are possible with God. With this mindset, We'll be praying this morning and say, Oh Lord, oh Lord. in this breakthrough service, in this breakthrough service of, of possibilities, of possibilities, we apply, we apply for your mighty hand, for your mighty hand of all possibilities, of all possibilities to, function to function on behalf, on behalf of every member of, every of member this commission. Of this commission. Let your hand, let your hand be seen, be seen working, working for us, for us in this service today, in this service today, for our for our breakthrough. And deliver us in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, 
Amen. The book of Isaiah 43 verses 19 says, Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. You say after me, oh Lord. Oh Lord. But Oh Lord, oh Lord, by your mighty hands, by your mighty hands, of all possibilities, of all possibilities, through the ministration, through the ministration of your word, of, of your word, and spirit, and spirit, let everything, let everything that has been difficult, that, that has, has been difficult, become easy for us, become easy for us. Let this week, let this week, mark a turning point, mark a turning point of a new, of a new and better things, and better in, things. Our lives, in, in our lives, in our family, in our family, and this commission. And this commission. For in Jesus name we have prayed Amen. In Second Thessalonians 2 1 to 2 Second Thessalonians 2 1 to 2 says now we beseech you brethren by the coming of our Lord Jesus and by our gathering together unto him that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us as that the day of Christ is at hand. Please, this morning we are praying for our Father and the Lord. I want us to pray passionately for him. Hallelujah. Please say after me, oh Lord, oh Lord, spread your hand, spread your hand of covering, of covering over the mantle bearer, over the mantle bearer of this commission, of this commission against every evil way, against every evil way, gathering, gathering and projection, and projection of the enemy, of the enemy against his life, against his life, against his family, against his family, grant him all trans, grant him all trans. today, today. As as a minister, your word, your your word. With, grace. with grace, in Jesus' mighty name. Mighty name, we have prayed. We are praying for our nation where we are living for God's hand upon their life. Psalm 1 to 2, verse 6 says, Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We're saying, Praying for the peace of Italy. May they prosper who love you. With this light, we'll be lifting up our voice, hands to heaven, and say after me, O oh Lord, O oh Lord, O oh Lord, oh Lord, upon this nation, upon this nation of Italy, of Italy, by your mighty hand, by your mighty hand, we pray, we pray, O oh God, oh God, that the evil, that the evil desires of men, desires of men, will not prevail, will not prevail in this land, in, in this land. land. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. The Lord has heard and answered us to him alone be all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name. And the people who shout their loudest. Amen. Hallelujah. Is someone happy to be in God's presence this morning? Is someone happy to be in God's presence this morning? Make a joyful noise to the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. We are into the, the interpretation of wisdom quote this morning. Join me in this morning for the interpretation of wisdom quote. Please celebrate Jesus as you help me make welcome our dear beloved brother, brother Isaac Ossel. Celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. 
Celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, sir, for joining me this morning. Thank you for having me, sir. Hallelujah. Firstly, we want to appreciate our Father in the Lord for daily imparting us with word of wisdom. We are not taking it for granted. Thank you so much, sir. Hallelujah. Among the eight, this word of wisdom is from my Father in the Lord. And the word of wisdom says that it does not matter who is with you. If God is not, impossible people and impossibilities can stop you. Hallelujah. Praise Master Jesus. Amen. I love this quote so much because it makes me remember greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Now I say it does not matter who is with you. The Bible speaking in the book of Psalms chapter 127 verses 1. It says, Except the Lord build the house. Say they that build, they will just labor in vain. Except the Lord keep the city. They that are watching are watching in vain. Now the key word and thing to note here is if God is not with you, then you, you have just built your own personal stumbling block. That is, impossible people and impossibilities will become the reality which you'll be facing. So I just want to admonish us this morning that in all you do, let the Lord be the foundation. Let the Lord be the one you seek after. Because he's the one that conquers the impossibility and make them possible. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, sir. One with God is a majority. If God is with you, nothing can stop you. If God is not with you, you can still be denied. You can still be limited. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, sir. Hallelujah. Amen. Tuesday night, this word of wisdom is from our father in faith, a grandfather in faith, Dr. Paul in Eche. The word of wisdom says that God is not the user of people. He's a raiser of people. It's not the mocker of people. It's a maker of people. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, sir. I think the songwriter says, the God we serve is not a joke. And really, he's not a mocker. The Bible made us to understand, it said, whatever you sow, you shall surely reap. So automatically, if you sow to the flesh, you will of the flesh reap corruption. Now, this word, of, this word is saying, God is not a user. So, if you are sowing to God, you will reap God. So, whatever you are sowing, you will definitely reap. So, I'm admonishing you this morning to note, God is not a joker. He is not a mocker. If he says something to you that he's going to do, or you are working with him, he means every word. God don't joke with statement. If he says, this is what you will be, you will be. So I'm not sure this morning, if God has promised you anything that he's going to do for you, he's going to stay true to it. He is not a mocker, he is not a user of men, but he is a rewarder. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, sir. God is not a user. He's a rewarder to those who diligently seek him. He said, as many that have received him, he gave the power. As many that have worked with him, work for him. He gave the power to do what? To become sons and daughters of God. He's not a user. He's a rewarder of people. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, sir. On Wednesday 10th, this word of wisdom is also from our grandfather, I paid faith, Dr. Paul in Eche. And the word says, passion determines ocean. Nobody can have a level of fire more than the heart that they have for God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, I said, when your Z has matured to the intent that eye service is not in view, then you have begun to enter that place where you have entered that level where your passion has now matched with what you are doing. The Bible speaking in the book of Psalms, chapter 69, verse 7 to 13. David was speaking and he was talking about, they say he has been reproached 
for the sake of Christ, for the sake of God. He has gone through things that the zeal of the Lord has actually taken and eaten him up. So, therefore, it's, there comes a time in a believer's life where you say, I have made up my mind to follow this Jesus. And no matter what comes my way, no matter the rain, no matter the situation, no matter the weather, I'm going to go with this God. Then you have entered that level where your fire will increase for God because God will not actually pour himself on those people who are not desperate for him, those people who are not thirsty for him, those people who know that they are helpless without him. So he says, no matter your passion, if, it does not, if you don't have that fire for it, then you don't have God that can carry it for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Sir. It's admonishing us to be desperate. Be desperate for God. The level of fire you have is equal to the love, you, the love of heart you have for God. If you want more fire, you increase hunger, love for God. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, sir. On Thursday 11th, the word of wisdom is also from my grandfather in faith, Dr. Paul in Eche. And the word says that anytime you see people at any level, don't blame God. Blame their choice. Hallelujah. The Bible says, appointed one man to die and after death, judgment. Automatically, every month, everyone will bear their own consequence on that day. They, they, they often say, who would you blame when you miss heaven? So automatically, every man will bear their own cross. There's a common word that say, every malam to his kettle. Amen. In the guide of this scripture that was given to us, I just quickly wrote down in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33, it says, an evil communication corrupts good manner. So first of all, if you want to advance in order for you not to blame people, Number one, keep a good company. Number two, sow the right seed. Three, listen to good counsel. And number four, know that there's no temptation that is new upon the earth that will take you by surprise. So rely on God. And finally, Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 told us that he said, take responsibility. That is just the whole. Say, then you shall be prosperous. So I don't want you to come and say, we are blaming somebody. No, don't blame anybody for your current level. The quote says, wherever you are today, this current state of life that we are now, we are the ones to be blamed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have choice to make in every aspect of our life. The Bible says, I said before you this day, life and death. So if you choose life, you will live. If, we cho if you choose death, you will die. So we have choices to make. Hallelujah. So it's rather we choose what would benefit us and also in the life to come. Not to blame God for circumstances and not to blame God for our situation. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, sir. Friday 12th, this word of wisdom is also from a grandfather in faith, Dr. Paul in the And the word says us. Most of the time, it is a reaction to personal failure that makes people attack those who succeed. Hallelujah. Praise God. Um, the scriptural verse that was given to us, First Samuel chapter 17, 26 to 30, was talking about David when he got to the camp of the Philistine, when the Goliath people were, were given a threat. And when he started to inquire, the brother immediately was, what are you doing here? You have come here to come and start showing yourself again. Now, what that means is this very quote that was given to us. The man could not face Goliath. So somebody down the want to face, so that is, he was mocking him. What, can you, what are you doing here? So in other words, when somebody is successful in doing some things, because the person tried to do it, the person did not succeed. So now, because somebody is succeeding, the quote is saying, that person is mocking the person. So, in other words, let's not go about reacting to people's success, but rather, let us support them when they succeed. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you so much, sir. Don't react to people's success. 
Create your own. Ask God for your own. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, sir, for joining me this morning. We've come to the end of today's edition of Interpretation of Wisdom Quote. See you next week. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We're in the testimony session. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Hallelujah. We have our brethren who are here to testify to the glory of God and to shame the devil. Hallelujah. Please, with Jesus' joy, as we put our hands together for the King of Kings, the maker of this miracle, I would like to call on this name, Sister Blessing Agbo. Sister Blessing Agbo. Pastor Josephine Audu. Sister Hallelujah Eseche. Sister Ifi Uwankolo. Sister Blessing Agbo. Pastor Josephine Audu. Sister Hallelujah Eseche. Sister Ifi Uwankolo. Hallelujah. Praise God. Please, you confirm your name and tell the church what the Lord has done. My name is Blessing Agbo. Praise Master Jesus. I'm here to, to thank God for everything that he's been doing in my life. Last year, it was something else. But God, deliver me. I'm here just to tell God, thank you, Daddy, for everything <clears throat> you have done in my life. Today, I'm plus one. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. The Lord continue to preserve and keep you in perfect health in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Pastor Josephine. Hallelujah. May you confirm your name and tell the church what the Lord has done. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Church, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My name is Pastor Jasmine Aldo, and I've come to return the glory to God for what he did for me. Uh, on the ninth, God added another beautiful years to my years, and I'm not taking it for granted. It has been a year of... Um, it has been wonderful. It has been from glory to glory, so I'm not really taking it for granted. So I've come to return glory to God. The second testimony was... Um, hello. Uh, concerning my, my grandson. On the day of my, of the test, uh, of my birthday, the, the children were coming, you know, just to give kind of, let's stay together, do get together. But um, prior to the day, uh, or that time, they were coming to, just for us to have get together. At about 1 p.m. in the afternoon, the grandmama, you know, he called, tell the grandmama that she wants to eat. They, they gave him food. After giving him food, you know, all of a sudden, you know, she went out uh, to the kitchen to prepare something for herself. Before she knew it, what she, she <laughs> let me, please, I want the media to, to show the picture so I can describe what happened properly. He jumped off from that place. He opened that place, the, the window, opened the taparello, that's the, this thing, pushed it and jumped down. We didn't hear anything, no noise. He now got up and walked back to the side of the house in the window, the front of the house, started crying for attention. My God, when I saw the, this thing, because I know the place is a very, uh, I know it, it has height. The Bible says, he will give his angels charge. The angel gave him a soft landing because when the grandma took him, was pressing him, this boy did not shout. No scratch, no nothing. He came home on the birthday day and was busy running this, this you know, if somebody tell you that something like that happened, you will never have believed. I'm not taking it for granted. 
That's why I've come to return glory unto God for his marvelous work and deliverance. The question I ask myself, assuming the car there, maybe there was a car and the car coming out at that particular time, what I would have said, or a car coming in because seeing a small child, you understand me, a small child alone coming. But God, you know, shame the devil. So Hallelujah. Glory. Now, when they told me, I tried to visualize the situation. From the place it fell down was different from the main door. He now had as little as the boy, he had the wisdom to turn around to stay at the place where they could hear him. This can only be God. I never see any God like you. 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 I never see, I never see any God like you. Hey, I never see any God like you. I never see, I never see any God like you. I never see, I never see any God like you. This situation reminded me of Sister Deborah's son, who they went for a a birthday party. The child left the auditorium to the major road where we have cars coming on both sides but the hand of Jehovah who has been preserving us keeping us that the enemy has not been able to ask us where is the God you serve to him alone we have come to return all the glory to Church, help me stand up on your feet as we give the Lord praise, the preserver, the preserver, the protector. I never see any God like you. I've not I never seen any God like you. I never see any God like you. I never see any. building but the hand of Jehovah gave him a soft landing I remember the testimony they shared of his son wanting to jump from a very oh Jesus please let's appreciate Jehovah I never see any God like you I never see any God like you There are many we don't even know. Our children are taking something that would have affected them. But Lord, you kept them. Daddy, you preserved them. Thank you, Lord. Lord, it has been you. Yes, Lord. You have not put us to shame and you will not put us to shame. Yes, Lord. In one voice as Trinitarian will come to say, thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, ancient of days. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, our maker. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, our protector. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, our preserver. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, our battle Thank fighter. You, Lord. To you alone be all the praise yes. and glory forever Amen. and ever, alone In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Please celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. You confirm your name and tell the church what the Lord has done. Praise the Lord. My name is Eseosa Eseche. I just want to thank God for um, the victory he gave me this week. On Thursday, I passed my paternity exam and I have a driver's license. So I just want to give God all the glory. Hallelujah. 
God is still at work. Praise God. Please, ma'am, you confirm your name and tell the church what the Lord has done. Praise the Lord. My name is Ify. I'm here to thank God for the healing upon my life. For close to seven years now, I've been on medication. When I was pregnant for my son, they said I have, a, I have thyroid. When the cough come, it's like I will not be able to breathe. I will cough for like five to ten minutes before we now came down. Before two minutes again, it will start again. So last two weeks, daddy called for altar call. Say if you have any sickness, you should come out. So I came out, I was standing there. After the prayer, I went home. For the two weeks now, I have not taken the medication. And that the cough have not come. Before the, I, ca I cannot eat anything red oil. If I eat it hard, the cough will. But I, last week, I eat yam with red oil. Uh, the, cough, the cough did not come. I was not here to thank God for the healing. Hey! Praise the Lord. This kind God do. I never I see your type. This is my God. Jesus. Amen. Church, we will stand up and celebrate this God. If you think it is cheap, ask those people in the hospital. If you have ever been sick, you will understand. If you have ever been afflicted, you will know something that the doctor has said it is impossible. God cheaply just, just remove it like that. By his mercy, just remove it like that. It is not by accident. It's by mercy. It's by mercy. And I declare to you, as many of you that are still sick in your body, that are still afflicted, and the doctor has said, you will manage this situation all the rest of your life. The mercy of God who spoke for her and gave her her healing will speak for you today in the name of Jesus. Please, let's celebrate God. This kind God, though, I've never seen your time for.
Lift up your hands and wash. You keep in no shafra da asha. Le pepe le kazim pina na mana na na shanda ya da da da. Le pele de sebra na shande kevi na 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 na. Le pele de sebra na na shande kevi na 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 na. Let me walk towards you. Oh my dear Lord, let me love what you love, oh dear Lord, there is how you design life to be loved, help me Lord to live how I ought to live. Let me walk what you want, oh my dear Lord. Let me love what you love, oh dear Lord. That is, that is how you design life to be loved.
Lift up your hands and worship him. Give him praise. Palika to shakapala katiha. Sati kapra kushki pahila to kumbra hadiski. Li kapahara kasata para katusha. La kwa kapahara katusa katibra. Li ki papara tata koshi ke bra katushka. Ifali katu kaparita katusha. La ku paparitos kambra hadi. Li ki paru ko paparata katia. Shaku to kumbra hadiza. Li we give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you.
Fire up, 
There are hinges everywhere, meeting needs in the house. Don't let yours pass you by. They are taking attendance. They are attending to your need in this house. What a visitation. Oh, thank you, Lord, for the visitation. Thank you for your glory everywhere. Thank you for your presence. We worship you. Oh, my Shada Laba. Yes, Lord. Can we just worship him in silence? Mm. Thank you, Father. You are welcome. <laughs> Thank you, sweet spirit of the living God. We acknowledge your presence. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. Thank you for your touch. There is somebody here, you came in with a pain. Shake yourself right now. That pain is out of your body. In the name of Jesus, do what you have not been able to do. He has taken that pain away. Shake yourself, shake yourself right now. Shake yourself. That earth challenge is settled in the name of Jesus. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you praise. Thank you, Lord. We give you glory. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. Thank you, Lord. We give you glory. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. Thank you, Lord. We give you glory. Hallelujah. We give you praise. Hallelujah. We give you glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you have been visited, touched by the Lord, give him praise. Whatever the Lord has done for you, please don't keep short. Say it so that that testimony can be established. Hallelujah. What an awesome time to be in God's presence. I want to first and foremost welcome you to church and to your season of great possibility. God's servant has spoken to us. God spoken through the mouth of his servant rather to us. That it is our season of great possibilities. And already it has started in our midst. It has started in our midst. It has started in our midst. We have been hearing testimonies. If you have not received your own, you will receive it. In the name of Jesus this month will not pass, rather these seasons will not pass until you receive yours. That thing that you think is, is impossible, that you are looking, you are be thinking, how can this thing be? You will see it come to pass. In the name of Jesus. Turn with me to the book of Mark chapter 9. Oh, Bashantaya Namakosekemene Kondaya Dabaratiya. 
Lebrando cose pelende ki aparatoshe. Kepeya. I will be reading from verse 17. And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which had a dumb spirit. And wheresoever he taketh him, it seareth him and foments. And gnash it with his teeth and pin it away. And I speak to thy disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. 19. And Jesus answered him and said, Oh, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. Now, this was a story of a child whom when we read down where we started from, the man was describing the situation of his son to Jesus. Now he said to Jesus that the son had what? A dumb spirit. It does mean that behind every sickness, or let me not say heavy, Behind most sicknesses, 99%, there are spirits responsible for it. Now, that's not where I'm going. I just want you to know. He said, I brought my son to your disciple. The man needed help so badly. And he saw the disciples of Jesus. And he looked and said, okay. Since these people are Jesus' disciples, since they had been with Jesus, I believe they too can help me. And this man brought his son to Jesus, eh, to the disciples rather. The Bible says the disciple could not cast out the demon responsible for the torment of the child. Now, the son also had an epileptic spirit. This demon had been tormenting him. You know epilepsy. When a man, you know, he can throw them inside fire, he can throw them. It was for that parent, for that father, the father was going through pain even more than that child. The embarrassment, the torture. As I'm talking about the story of this child, I want you to picture whatever you are going through. I want you to fit in into the story I am telling you right now. The Bible says, uh, this man saw Jesus and he came to Jesus to report to Jesus that my child has been suffering. And I thought your disciple would be able to render help to me, but they could not. He said, Jesus... Now Jesus asked him a question. He said, for how long has this thing been? For how long has this situation been? For how long have you been going through what you are going through? The man answered and said to Jesus, he said, it has been from childhood. 
pay out the child. I don't know the age of the child because it was not recorded. It might be 17 years. It might be 10 years. It might be 12 years. It might be 18 years. It might even be 20 years. It might be 30 years. For this long, the child has suffered. For this long, the child was tormented. But Jesus said to the man, bring him to me. No matter what you are going through, no matter be your situation, no matter what the doctor has said to you, no matter the circumstances, no matter the years you have suffered it, no matter, no matter, sister, if you just shared that testimony and she said for seven years she went through what she went through, until mercy spoke for her, I speak to you today, Jesus is saying, bring it to me, whatever be that situation, bring it, bring that situation to me, I am here to take it. Mercy will speak for you today. I say mercy will speak for you today. Now Jesus said, Oh, Kayada. Jesus 19, Jesus answered and said, Oh, faithless generation. How long? Okay, we've read that. 20. And they brought, when Jesus said, Bring him home to me. And they brought him unto Jesus. When he saw him straight away, the spirit tell him, hmm. the demon wanted to show itself. Hallelujah. And he fell on the ground and wallowed for me. He started manifesting. And he asked his father, okay, for how long? Yeah, we'll jump. 22. The father said, he said, and often times it had cast him into fire. Okay. 23. Jesus said unto him, if thou can't believe. I want us to read this together. 23. If you don't have your Bible, they are projecting it. Want to go, let's read. Jesus said unto him, if thou some things some things. <laughs> the all things, does it include what you are going through? Does it include your situation? Does it include that pain? Does it include that cancer? Does it include that blood disease? Does it include stagnation? Does it include that stubborn child? Does it include your situation? He said, all things are what? To him that believeth. So this morning, I want to speak to you on the topic I titled to faith as one of the factors to live in the realms of possibilities. Fix as one of the factors to live in the realm of possibility. Jesus says, if thou can believe, if only you can believe. As I studied this scripture, I picked some things out of that statement that Jesus made. And I will be sharing it with you right now. He said, if thou canst believe. What does Jesus mean? My own remo, my own understanding of what he meant by the word, if thou can't believe. One, if you can put your faith to work, you can have your miracle. When Jesus says, if that can, thou can believe, if only you can believe, it means if you can put your faith to work, you can have your miracle. Where there is faith, there is miracle. Matthew chapter 17 verse 20. Matthew 17, 20. Are we there? 
And Jesus said unto them, he said, because of your own belief, why you have not seen the situation change? Why you have not seen the thing turning around for you? He said, it's as a result of your faithlessness. It's as a result of your unbelief. He said, because of your unbelief. He said, for verily I say to you, for verily I am speaking to you, Trinitarians. If ye have faith as grain, as a mustard seed. You don't need a big faith here. We all know mustard seed. It's a very tiny seed. Jesus said, if only you can have a little faith. It's all he needs. He said, if you have just this small grain of faith, a little faith, if you have faith as grain of as a grain of mustard seed. He said, ye shall say. It is your faith that gives you the boldness to say. Am I talking to people in the house? The reason why you are afraid is as a result of faithlessness. If you know, ah, the Bible says, it's a greater easy that is in us. If you know that God you serve, you will be bold to face that problem. It is that faith that gives you the audacity to speak to the mountain. He said, if you have it as clean as most, you will say, you will speak to the situation. You will not cry over the situation. You will speak to the situation and it will hear you. Did he say that? He said it. He said, you will speak to the situation and the situation will hear you. That sickness can hear. You. <laughs> that problem can hear. It has ears. It can hear. It can hear you. Praise the Lord. Number two, when Jesus said, if you can believe, it means if you can trust Him enough, <laughs> possibilities will become your normal lifestyle. If you can trust him enough, possibilities will become your lifestyle. Matthew chapter 19 verse 26. He said, if you can trust him enough, possibilities will become what? Your normal lifestyle. He said, but Jesus beheld him and said unto him, unto them, beheld them and said unto them, with men, this is impossible. Now, the reason one of the reasons you are seeing impossibility because you have put your trust in men. He said, if you can trust him enough, you can trust me enough, you will see possibility, impossibilities becoming possible. He said, with men, this kind of thing is not possible. He said, with God, all things, if you can trust him enough, You put your trust in man that will fail you, that cannot help you. He said, when you trust him enough for what you are going through, he will make it possible. I see possibilities happening for you. In the name of Jesus. Number three. What does Jesus mean when he's talking about possibilities? When he said, if you can believe. He said, if you can hook, if you can hook your limited faith on me, if you can hook your limited faith on me, things will work out for you. 
If you can't walk your limited faith on me, this will work out. Mark chapter 9, verse 25. Mark 9, 25. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit and saying unto him, that dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him and enter no one. Praise the Lord. Let's see 23. Go to 20. Okay, let's t- turn to the book of um, Matthew. Matthew. Chapter 9, rather. Sorry. It was Matthew 9, not Mark. Matthew 9. Matthew 9. Take it from verse 20. It said, And behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood, 12 years, came behind him and touched him. And touched him. And touched him, and touched the aim of his garment. For she said within herself, If I may but touch his garment, I shall be made whole. Please go again to the book of Mark. I have seen it. Mark chapter 9, where we read from before. I will come back to this scripture. Mark 9. Where the man said, help my unbelief. No, 20 some. Go on, go down. Okay. And Jesus, okay, 23. Let's see 23. 23. Jesus said unto him, if thou can believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. 24. He said, and straight away the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help thou my own belief. Now, I said, if you can hook your limited faith. Now, what was the man saying in this place? He said, I believe oh, because I know my faith is limited, it's small. But Lord, help my unbelief. But eventually there is an atom of unbelief. I hook my faith on your own, Jesus. I hook my faith on you. He said, Lord, please help my unbelief. If but eventually there is a doubt, Lord, help me. And it is your helplessness that attracts him. The woman with the issue of blood, where we read in Matthew... He said, if I can touch, in other words, the woman hooked her faith on Jesus, not her own. He said, the Bible said she had suffered for so long with this issue. How long is your issue? How long is your issue? Some of you, this thing just started for just one month. You are giving up. For two weeks, you have started asking questions. God, why? For 12 good years, the woman went through what she went through. And she said to herself, if I just can hook my faith on him. That was the action she took by touching the hem of his garment. 
If I can attach my faith on him, I know this situation will become possible. This impossible situation will become possible. No matter what you are going through, he is waiting for you. Jesus is waiting for you. Just a little, you know, those who fish, these local fishermen, what do they, this is their hook. They will attach worm, maggot on it, so that they can attract the fishes on the water. What Jesus needs you to do is just that little faith you think you have remaining. He just wants you to hook it on him. He is waiting for you. He is eager to answer you than you are willing to call on him. He is at the door. He is patiently waiting for you saying, if only my child can come to me. If only my child can see what I want him or her to see. This thing is but a light thing for me to do. Hallelujah. Number four. He said, just trust me enough for that problem and I will bring it to pass. What he meant is saying, just trust me enough for your problem, for your life. I will bring it to pass. Isaiah chapter 46 verse 10. Isaiah chapter 46. Isaiah 46. If you are there. 10. He said, trust me enough how I will bring it to power. Declaring the hand from the beginning. And from ancient times, the things that are not yet done. Saying, my cancer shall stand and I will do my pleasure. What he says, what I have proposed to do, I will do it. What you need to do is to trust me. He said from ancient time, he has declared it. He has spoken it. He will not change it now. Eleven. He said calling a remnant's bed from the east. The man that executed my cancer. From a far country. Yea, I have spoken. Yea, I have spoken it. Trinitera, I have spoken concerning your issues. I have spoken concerning that sickness. I have spoken that it is your season of possibilities. It's I have spoken it. And I will bring it to pass. I will bring it to pass. I have proposed it. I have proposed it. I will also do it. I will do it. I have said that as long as it, it, it has proceeded out of my mouth. Oh yeah. He said the jot of my word shall not fall to the ground until it comes to accomplishment. Only let me say to you, every word that God has spoken to your life, either to you directly or through his servant to you, they shall with a faith come to pass. Psalm chapter 37 verse 5. Psalm 37 verse 5. If only you trust him. What he needs, what you need to do. God can do all things, but he's a God of principle. For you to attract him, you have to do your part. He said, commit thy ways unto the Lord. Trust also in him. And he shall what? Bring it to pass. That's what Jesus meant. When he said, if you can believe, if you can trust me enough, I will bring it to pass. He's bringing it to pass in your life. Amen. Isaiah 14, 20, 24. Isaiah 14, 
He said, the Lord of hosts has sworn, saying, surely as I have taught. <laughs> Read it with me. Surely as I have taught concerning you. Put your name there. Surely as he has taught concerning my life, concerning my case, concerning my issue, so shall it come to pass. And as I have proposed repetition again, so shall it stand. It shall not be shaken. No man can push it away. No man can turn it. He said, it shall stand. Except you don't want it. You are the only one that can stop his cancer, his purpose. Fifthly, he said, if only you can lean on me, I will lift up that burden off your shoulder. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. If you can lean on me, as a baby looks up, to a mother for sock, Lord, I lift up my eyes to you, Lord. You know, little children, at times they will come towards their mother or their father. They will just rest their head for a part. That is what Jesus is saying. He said, if you can lean on me, I will take off that body from your neck. That yoke, the enemy has used to yoke you. That affliction, if you can lean on me. He said, come unto me, O ye that labor and are heavy laden. I will do what? Give you rest. Come unto me, O ye that are labor and have been laden. The problem is too much for you to bear. And every night you are crying. You are saying, Lord, when will this thing pass away? When will I be free from this situation? Oh God, when will you hear my voice? Lord, when? He said, come to me. Bring that Lord. I want to take it away from you. And I can't shut up. I did not create you from you for you to carry that load. I did not make you for you to carry that body. Bring it to me. I am willing to take it away. He said, cast your yoke upon me. Why are you suffering? Why are you depressed? He said, bring it to me. Bring it. Drop it and leave it there. I will take it away and I will give you rest. I am speaking to somebody. Bring it. Actually, bring it to me. Are you tired of it? Bring it. Are you weary? Bring it. He said, I will take it away. In this season, I will take it away. In this season, I will wipe your tears away. In this season, I will show you the other side of me. In this season, I will bring to pass that which concerns you. He said, bring it. Hallelujah. Now, what is faith? God's servant teaching us said, faith, faith is an heart. It said, it is behaving what you believe. Faith is behaving what you believe. Now, I said to us when I started, that one of the keys that will make you live in the realm of the possibility, the realm of possibility, is your faith. You have your part to play to live in this realm of possibilities. He said, faith is behaving your belief. Now, it is having confidence in what you hope for. An assurance for what you have not seen with your optical eyes. But you are guaranteed that it will come to reality. I take it again. It is having confidence in what you opt for. An assurance of what you have not seen with your optical eyes, your physical eyes. But you are guaranteed that it will come to reality. 
In the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 1, it said, Now faith is, now faith is present. Now faith is the substance of things, not a substance. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Though you know you have not seen it, but you are sure. You hope for it. That surely it will come to pass. Now when you read to the Bible says, when you to, he said, by faith, the elders obtain good reports. That our patron, the elders of those days, which the Bible put as an example for us, what made them stand out was as a result of their faith. He said, they were commended for their faith. Faith gave them a name amongst others. Their faith makes them outstanding. That's why they were written as an example for us to follow. The Bible says that through faith, by faith, Abel offered more excellent sacrifice. They were all commended for their faith. Faith was the currency that the elders of old use as a means of transaction. Example for the Abraham. Not wavering, not shaking. Not feeling he, 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 he was old. At the time God said to him, leave your kindred. Leave your father's house. The Bible says, by faith he left. Even when God had promised him that he will make him father of many nations, many years passed by. It wasn't coming to pass. But, but his faith stood still. At the end, the Lord visited him. What you make you stand at in this generation is your faith. Faith is a lifestyle. It is the realm of the, possib of, of the believers. Faith is the lifestyle of a believer. It is a realm, and that realm is where believers dwell. It's where we as believers stay. Hallelujah. The Bible said in the book of Romans chapter 14 verse 23b, it said, for whatever that is done outside faith is sin. It's sin. Because we believers, we don't live in sin. We live in this realm, in a realm called the realm of faith. Where possibilities are made possible. Where impossibilities are made possible. On Wednesday, God's servants was telling us the ingredients of faith, which I want to share with you right now. Now, when we say faith, in, take, uh, go back to Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. He said, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. So one of the ingredients of faith is what? Hope. One of the ingredients of faith is hope. Now, hope is a feeling of expectation. When you have hope, it means that you are expecting, you have this feeling of expectation that this will be. That this will come to pass. So faith is broad. It has ingredients. For you to know that you have faith, these things have to be in place in your life. One, hope. Having a feeling of expectation of a particular thing to happen. You have this feeling of expectation for a particular thing to happen. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 23, verse 18, it says, for surely there is an end. It says, for surely there is an end. The expectations, thy expectation shall not be what? Cut short. Now, listen. 
He said, hope is the feeling of expectation that something will happen. And the Bible is telling us now that when you have hope, it means you have expectations, right? And he's saying to us that surely there's an end of that problem. Whatever you have expected, whatever you have trust God for, shall not be cut short. It shall not be cut short. It shall not end halfway. It shall surely come to pass. Up. In the book of Romans chapter 5 verse 5. It said. Up. Make it not ashamed. What does this mean? It means that hope does not put a man to shame. He said when you hope, when you have hope, you will not be put to shame. So the ingrown of the ingrown is faith. When you say you have faith, hope, the first thing that comes to play is what? Is hope. Number two is receptability. Receptability, receptiveness. John chapter 1, verse 11. 11 and 12. He said, He came unto his own, and his son received him not. He said, But as many as received him, to them, what did he do? He gave power to become. As many as received him. Now, the second ingredient of faith is receptiveness to the word. As the word come, you receive it. He said, as many as received this word, he gave the power to become. He gave the power to live in the realm of possibilities. To become sons. To become sons. And let me tell you, it is only sons who, li who live in the realm of possibilities. Slaves don't live in that realm. Slaves, servants, they don't live in that realm. Only, only sons, they live in the realm. So the second character, the ingredient of faith is what? receptiveness. At the word come, you receive it. You receive it. You thank God for the word. You receive it with thanksgiving. You receive it with joy. You receive it with everything, every fiber of your being. Then when you have received it, the third thing you do, all this accompany, what makes faith? Do you understand what I'm saying? All these are things that makes up faith. When you have received it, you meditate on it. Number three. It's meditation. God speaking to Joshua in Joshua 1.8. He said, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. He said, but you shall meditate on it, what? Day and night. Not only day and live the night. It means every time. What you need to do to meditate. Now, as whatever God has said to you, now you have received it. The word that has been given, the word that affects your life. The, when it, okay, example, he says, let me use for those trusting God for the fruit of the womb. He said there shall be no barren in the land. Now you have received it. You start meditating. You, med you ponder up. Eh? He said, there shall be no barren in the land. You think about it. You think about it. As you are meditating, it's forming. You know? It's forming. Life is taking place. As you meditate, as you look, you say, as we look, as we behold, we become. You meditate on it. Then, after meditation, you, meditation, you don't talk while meditating. You use your brain. Now, after meditation, it brings you to the place of repetition. <laughs> that is faith. It brings you to the place of repetition. Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. We overcame, we overcame what? By the blood of the lamb 
and by what? The words of our testimony. Now you begin to say it to yourself. The Bible says there shall be no barren in the land. I am not barren, I am fruitful. I am not barren, I am fruitful. I cannot be barren. I cannot be poor. He said, healing are the children's bread. I am a child of God. Therefore, I cannot be sick. Every day, you are feeling it, yet you are saying it. You are repeating it. You are talking it. You are announcing it. I can never be sick. I can never be poor. I can never be depressed. I can never be broke. I can never be barren. I can never suffer. I can never be down. You keep saying it. You keep repeating it. You keep saying it. As you keep saying it, you keep talking it. Don't mind who is hearing and who is not hearing you. They might tell you, but you are sick. No, 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 you don't know me. I am not sick. But you don't have a child. No, you don't know me. I have a child. I am pregnant. Oh, your business is not working. You don't understand. My business is working fine. It's flourishing. I am advancing. I am progressing. I am breaking forth on every side. I am at all shut up. No power can limit me. No power can put me down. I excel. Where I walk, where I tread on, is the part of possibilities. All things are possible. Yes. They have blocked your document. In fact, they have canceled it. You say, no. That is not my document that they cancel. They don't have the ghost. They don't have the audacity to cancel it. I am the daughter of the king of kings. The most high. The one who dwell in the midst of the king. Hey! 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 You talk it, you verbalize it. You say it. As you say it, you move to the fifth one. Boldness. What you say gives you boldness. You gives you boldness. Proverbs chapter 28 verse 1. Gives you boldness. They say, shut up, you are talking too much. No. You have the boldness to confront. He said the wicked flee when no man pursues him. But I am not a wicked person. I am not part of the wicked. That I am not running. I have boldness. He said, but the righteous, they are as bold as a lion. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So I am bold. He said in the book of Timothy, he said, for God has not given you the spirit of what? But he, what has he given you? The spirit of boldness. You receive the boldness. That boldness, you carry that boldness to the gate of the enemy. And say, enemy, devil, you have messed with me for too long. Because, because, no, 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 listen. The Bible says, through knowledge, the just is de- delivered. I have been wallowing in ignorance. Now I know my right. Then you come to the enemy and you confront him. Say, Satan, get out. Lose your grip and hold from my life. You have no part in the life of my children. You have no part in the life of my husband. You have no part in my life. You have no part in my business. You have no part in anything that concerns me. You receive the boldness and you confront the enemy at the gate. And when the enemy says, you will know this one. This one is a lion. No. This one is a lioness. It will flee. That situation has no option than to flee. And everything that has confronted you, they are fleeing from you. In the name of Jesus. Now, this now brings you to the last part. Now, all these are components of it. When you gather all these things, all these things make up faith. So, it will bring you to the sixth one, which is action. You begin to behave who you are. You begin to behave. You are They say you are poor. You are talking. I walk in the realms of million. I am a millionaire. Your dressing change. The way you talk change. They say you are bad. You begin to look yourself. Uh, 
eh, this, my, this my pregnancy ah, is worrying me. It's disturbing me. I am vomiting. I am spitting. Ah, baby, stay where mommy wants to rest. Ay! Ay! It is the rhyme of action. They say, your leg is paining you. Say, no, this leg, you are not paining me. You are doing it. I am walking. I am walking. I am walking. They said your child, they said your child is autistic. No, he is not. He is not. You said, my child, you are It is the realm of action that you take action. You behave. You behave like what you want to see. You behave it. It is the time to behave. You are, yeah, 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 yeah. You have lived too much, so long like somebody. How can you allow somebody to pity you? How can you allow that? That, 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 that is not faith. To be pitied is not faith. You get up and you begin to behave like the person you want to be. Like that future you see. You behave like that very future you see. Stand up on your feet. Erabashata. Eka sataya. Anaku sepelentu yamanaka. It is time for you to act it. They call it act. They call people actor because there is future something that is not real. They are acting. So you are acting your future. You are an actor. You are acting your future. You are behaving your future. But they say, ah, how are you going to say you rich? How can you say you are rich? You are this. You are that. But nothing. You say you are not seeing me. You are not seeing me. I don't know what you are seeing. But what I am seeing is that I am a rich woman. Uh, you are seeing, no, you are not seeing. Maybe, ah. Uh, your eyes, have you seen your doctor since? I am well. I am so strong. I am, that's why we as believers, we don't say I am sick. Even the thing is pressing us, we say, I am strong. I am bold. I am excelling. I am fruitful. Now, I hear some people will say, eh, this faith that they are talking about, how do I have this faith? The Bible says, in Romans chapter 10, verse 17, it says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Hearing and hearing, as I have spoken, I just spoke to you now. Your faith has been built. Your faith. So go home and practicalize these things. That's where, when you put these things together, it means that you have faith. You have faith. So you will lift up your voice this morning. And you will appreciate to the Lord for the word that has come to you. For the word that you have received this morning. Lift up your hands and give the Lord praise. Father, I have received your word. I receive it with joy. I receive it with gladness. I receive it with joy. I receive it with gladness. I receive it with joy. I receive it with gladness. I receive it with joy. I receive it with gladness. in Jesus' name we are praying. Amen. Now, I don't know whatever you have brought in as a challenge to the Lord. Whatever you brought in, I want you to begin to drop it. You are not permitted to go with that load. You are not permitted to go with that sickness. You are not permitted to go home with that pain. You are not permitted to go home with that situation plaguing you. Go ahead and begin to drop it. Say, Lord, I drop it at your feet. Whatever it is mentioned, it drop it at his feet. Oh, Shadabada. He get the Babada Cossa. 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 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Lift up those hands. Father, we thank you. We give you praise for speaking to us. We thank you because every burden that your people brought into your sanctuary, into your house, they have been taken away. In the name of Jesus, I declare the sick healed. In the name of Jesus, I declare the oppressed delivered. In the name of Jesus, I declare the barren fruitful. In the name of Jesus, I declare victory on every side for your people, Lord. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Adonai. Be glorified forever. Every shy that has swayed, that has swayed, it, that has deviated. In the name of Jesus, I declare their minds return back. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord, church. Amen. Please quickly, those of you paying your tithes, if you are paying your tithe in the house, in the service today, please come forward as we receive your tithes. Then we take the announcement. Please listen to the following church announcement. This is our year of the hilltop glory and our seasons of possibilities. Our services are as follows. Every Wednesday we meet here for our Bible study and communion service stroke prayer meeting. And that, of course, is by 6.30 p.m. Our Sunday services are as follow. Our workers' meeting starts here by 9 a.m., while the main service is by 10 a.m. Praise the Lord. For those that have not done their water baptism, the opportunity is still open. And of course, the classes will start soon. If you are interested, please indicate with your church pastor and uh, let us enroll you for the classes. For without the classes, you will not be baptized. So we are commencing the classes very soon. Praise the Lord. The following family will be having their baby dedication in the month of May. The family of Dickin Ima Best and the family of Brother Favor Erabo and Sister Elizabeth. Pama, Pama 2 Church, please remember your evangelism this Saturday. All those that pledge for the church building project can start redeeming their pledges to Dickness Happy Oko. As announced by the senior pastor, once you redeem your pledge to her, also communicate the same to Mama. All those doing their blessing of marriage or baby dedication should please give such information to their group pastor. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please, if today is your first Sunday of worshiping with us, we want to recognize you specially. If you have such, please could you indicate by waving those hands to, 
just wave those hands up, let's recognize, yeah, the song there. You are welcome to the sanctuary, where good things never cease, where the love of God is shared, a bubbling heart, where the small is a sparkle, say welcome to the ICC. Hallelujah. God keep adding to his church, and we are indeed grateful. Please remain standing. We want to welcome you specially to TICC, Trinity International Christian Center. We have some information for you, for you and a gift from the senior pastor. Please take your phone, your Bible, whatever you came to church with this morning. Please kindly walk behind. The minister is ready for you to take your information and pray with you. Please put those hands together for the Lord Jesus. Please, let's be upstanding as we honor the Lord this afternoon with our offering. Father, in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus, we thank you for this privilege to give in your house today. Thank you, Lord, because the blessing of the giver is our portion today in the name of our Lord Jesus. Amen. I serve a God who is full of faith. Hallelujah. 